Hi everyone. In this video, we'll be reviewing the moving trihedral. First, let's recall some concepts regarding the moving trihedral. So given a particle moving along a curve C, defined by the vector valued function R, then we can define the moving trihedral as being composed of three unit vectors. First, let me draw the curve C and the vector valued function R like this. Okay, so the first vector is the unit tangent vector. The second one is the unit normal vector, and the third one is the unit binormal vector. We're gonna go through the definitions of each of these one by one. So first we have the unit tangent vector, and this is defined by the derivative of R divided by the magnitude of the derivative of R. So if we were to represent that in our drawing, uh, we can draw it like this. This is the tangent, the unit tangent vector. Okay. Next, we have the unit normal vector. This is defined as the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. This is perpendicular to the tangent vector, so I'll draw it like this. And finally, we have the unit binormal vector. Now this is defined as the cross product of the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector. Um, this, uh, this binormal vector is perpendicular to both the unit normal and the unit tangent. So I'll draw it like this. Um, one thing to note about the definition of the unit binormal vector is that since you're taking a cross product, the order of the vectors that you take the, pro the cross product of matters. So you have to take the tangent vector first and then cross it with the normal vector. If you switch around the order, you'll get something different. So that's just some small detail to note, to remember. Okay, so we can also define the binormal vector in terms of R, and you would do so using this formula, the cross product of the derivative of R with the, the second derivative of R divided by the magnitude of the same vector. Okay, so using these three vectors, we can define what's called the T and B frame or Frenet frame. And this is a coordinate system formed by the components of the moving trihedral. There are three planes here and they're formed by various combinations of the three vectors we've defined. So first up, we have the osculating plane. Now this plane is spanned by, by the tangent vector and normal vector. So this means this is the plane on which N and T live. So if we can draw it like this. You can imagine that this is the plane that, that N and T lies on. It's flat. Okay, next we have the rectifying plane. This is the plane where the tangent vector and the binormal vector um, lies on. So in this case, it's this plane. Lastly, we have the normal plane. This is the plane where N, the normal vector, and the binormal vector lie. So finally, we have this plane. Okay. So that's all for the review. Let's move on to some problems. Okay, so let's start with the first problem. The first problem asks us to find the moving trihedral of R, um, which is a vector value function defined by, by this. And find the moving trihedral at t equals pi over two. Recall that the moving trihedral um, is composed simply of the three vectors that we, we defined a while ago, the tangent, normal, and binormal vectors. So, the obvious way to tackle this problem is to find each of those three vectors. And we can start first by solving for 
the unit tangent vector. So to start off, let's calculate the derivative of r. And the way we calculate the derivative of r is we do it on each component. Okay, after that, we need to find the magnitude of this vector. So we simply get the magnitude. And in order to simplify this, we can note that we can factor out 36 in, in these two terms so that we can get cosine squared of 2t plus sine squared of 2t. And after doing this, um, we can note that by trigonometry, cosine squared and sine squared is equal to 1. So this is all equal to 36. And substituting back in 36 and simplifying, we get the square root of 37. Okay, so we can now solve for the unit tangent vector. And you can verify that you'll get this, this vector. But since we need the moving trihedra at t equals pi over 2, we don't need the tangent vector for all times t. And we only need to substitute in pi over 2. So we'll get this. Moving on, we can get the, the unit normal vector, which we do by first getting the derivative of p. Um, we can verify that, that this is the derivative of p. Then by normalizing, we can get the magnitude. The magnitude um, is again set up like this. And again, we use the identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And if we simplify, we'll get this. And using these, we can get the unit normal vector. We can verify that the unit normal vector is equal to this one. Finally, evaluating at t equals pi over two yields this vector. Okay, lastly, we need the unit binormal vector at pi over two. This time we can go straight to b of pi over two because this is simply defined as the cross product of p of pi over two with n pi over two. Recall that this is the definition of the binormal vector. Okay, so since we already know p of pi over two and n of pi over two, we simply substitute that in and take the cross product. So after taking the, pro the cross product, you should get this vector. Thus, the moving trihedra at t equals pi over two is given by these three vectors. Actually, there's a typo here. This should be negative one. And we're done. Okay, so let's move on to problem two. Problem two asks us to find the equation of the oscillating, rectifying, and normal planes of R being defined by this vector valued function at t equals two. So before getting into the solution, let's just recall what the osculating, rectifying, and normal planes are. So first up, the osculating plane um, is the plane that contains the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector. On the other hand, the rectifying plane contains the tangent vector and the binormal vector. And lastly, the normal plane contains the normal vector and the binormal vector. So given these definitions, how do you think we can find the equation of the planes? Well, starting with the osculating plane, we can imagine the tangent normal and binormal vectors, like so. When t equals two. And the osculating plane contains t and n. So it would be this plane. Okay. 
recall that to to define a plane, we need two things. We need a point. In this case, we can take this point here. This is R2. And we also need a normal vector to the plane, a, a vector that's that's perpendicular to the plane. In this case, since we know that the binormal vector is perpendicular to both n and t, and we can simply get the binormal vector. So given these two ingredients, R2 and B2, um, this is a point and a normal vector, we can use the point normal form to obtain the equation of the oscillating plane. On the other hand, if we want to get the equation of the rectifying plane, the plane that contains T and B, then again, we need a point, which we can take as R2, and we need a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. In this case, we can take n, n2. And similarly for the normal plane, um, we want to take a point and the normal vector, the point can be r2. The normal vector this time can be t, t2, the tangent vector. So what this tells us is that we need to solve for tangent, normal, and binormal vectors. So let's, let's do that first. We're gonna employ a different method to get the, the three vectors. We're gonna streamline it a bit by first taking the derivatives of R. So we take the derivative of R at two and we get this vector. We get the second derivative of R at two and we get this vector. We also get the magnitudes of these derivatives. We get um, six and two square root of two, respectively. And from this, we can get components of the moving trihedral pretty quickly. We will be getting the unit tangent vector first. We can verify that the vector we get is this one. And then, we can get the binormal vector. We've already calculated for these two, so we can just substitute it in and simplify. In this case, you get this one. And finally, we can get the cross product of these two to get the unit normal. So recall that the unit normal vector can also be obtained as the cross product of the binormal vector with the, the tangent vector. Again, the order here matters. In the first slot, it should be the binormal vector. And on the second slot, it should be the tangent vector. So this is another identity that we can use. And if we use that, we'll get that the normal vector at two is, is this. Okay, finally, we need the point at P equals two. So that's simply R2. Okay, so as we discussed, we can use these, these uh, vectors to obtain the various planes of the free net frame. So the oscillating plane, again, can be obtained if we have R2. This is the point. And the binormal vector, B2. This is a normal vector, normal vector to the plane. And what the point normal um, form tells us is that the plane is defined by B1 X minus R1 plus B2 y minus r2 plus b3 z minus r3 where 
B1, B2, and B3 are simply the components of, of B. And similarly for R1, R2, and R3. Okay, so this is the point normal form. And these are the ingredients of the point normal form. Given these, we can readily calculate for the equation of the oscillating plane. So you should get um, this equation. Next, we can calculate for the rectifying plane. Recall that the point here is R2 again. And the normal vector is N2. So given these two, we can already um, solve for the equation of the rectifying plane. You should get this. And finally, we can calculate the normal plane. In this case, the normal vector is the, the tangent vector. Okay, so that's the solution for this problem. Thank you for listening.